If any of you need an official countdowner for your Super Bowl gathering later, he's available. He he's available. really good at it. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Yeah, it's not a rhetorical good morning like I do a lot of times in my classes. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Brother D. It's awesome to see you here this morning and, and travel safe on your way out when we do finish up later as things are getting a little greasy. To that end, there will be no um, youth group today. Uh, we want to be careful out there on the roads. And if you are traveling out and about to different gatherings this afternoon, please be, please be cautious. Be, be careful. Here's a different kind of question. How many of you have no intention of watching the Super Bowl this evening? Look at that. See? See, a lot of times, like, where are you going? Like, this. see, there are people that are like, doesn't really matter. I got other things going on. Well, uh, we ho wish you all the best in those. Um, the first announcement is relative to, if you are having a gathering, um, earlier this week, the pastor sent out an email to all those that have email contact. And in it, there, is, there are links for uh, downloading a 25-minute long film or, or video that you could watch at your gathering later today. And um, did anybody see that email earlier this week from the pastor? Um, I saw it and I was like, oh, yeah. Okay, and I didn't watch it, and then I got an email saying, the pastor would like you to talk about this thing. So, so I was like, oh, I should watch that to see what I'm talking about. And I watched it, and I was like, oh man, I wish I had watched this just because I watched it, not because I had to, because this is really, it's really interesting. It's really well done. Uh, I'll just give you a little a summary, so you're like, I don't have to watch it now, Dean, because you told me all about it. Um, it's hosted by um, James Brown, the CBS sports broadcaster, and uh, it features in it different NFL players talking about what it means to seek Christ. And they just go around and they have different footage throughout the year as well, leading up to the Super Bowl time. Uh, and they just go to different players from out the NFL uh, and talk to them and they share some of their stories and some of their, some of their life and some of their situations and circumstances. There's two different versions that you can download so that if, you, uh, if everybody in your, at your gathering, uh, they're all Christians, they're all saved, they're all believers, they're all fellow believers in Christ, then there's one that doesn't have... Uh, with it, if you will, an altar call, an opportunity for somebody to accept Christ as their Savior. But if you have folks that are with you that may be unsaved, and you're like, this is just a great time to, to watch this and hear these testimonies of these players, there's also a, a, a brief time near the end of one of them that does have an opportunity for to somebody to to come to Christ. So um, it's really cool. And it is... It, the, the company that did it is called uh, Sports Spectrum. It's super well done, very professional in all of the interviews and the whole process. Um, in, I thought I was watching a piece that was on part of NFL Sunday programming right on national TV. So it's super well done. So check that out. And uh, again, be safe if you're traveling out about this afternoon. Next week, we have our, uh, our monthly potluck uh, luncheon following the uh, service uh, that is uh, Communion Sunday next week. And so that will be taking place. We, you're all invited. Please take note of like the dishes and our hosts are the Gallisons next week for that. Um, there isn't a slide for this, but I just will mention uh, briefly that also next Sunday at four o'clock will be the uh, memorial service for Bob Lamson. And, um, and following the memorial service, there'll be uh, some refreshments and such after that as well. So that's uh, all taking place next Sunday. So... Um, yeah, those are the announcements. Uh, I got the youth group right. I said no youth group. Great. And uh, again, we thank you for being here. And let's uh, stand as we worship together. Your grace is enough. We'll start off with a word of prayer as we get started in here this morning. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for today. And I thank you, even as we are about to sing, your grace is enough. Uh, and we went through our Sunday school time, Lord. And um, Father, something that stuck with me was that it's, it's not just about what we do but it's about what we don't do and I thank you Lord that your grace is enough so that even in those moments that I don't follow through like I should that your grace is sufficient Lord that it's not all about following uh, every step of the law or every measure to 
achieve perfection, uh, Lord, but rather recognizing that I can't do it in and of myself. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for your love. I thank you for the gathering together of everyone that's here today. Lord, be with those that can't be here today. And, and uh, Lord, I, I just pray that uh, the blessing that we have being here together can be extended to those people in some form, communication, whether it's a phone call or a, or a visit at some point this week. Just help us to touch base and share the love of Christ with each one. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness, O God of Jacob. You wrestle with us.
in the morning, isn't it? To come in and recognize, Lord, your love makes me do this. And singing's a great thing to want to do, isn't it? I think so. Even if you, if, even if you don't have the best voice in the world, it doesn't matter. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Amen? Amen. I won't mention any names. So, we want to thank you again for being here. Let's pray as we uh, prepare our hearts and our minds for the Lord's tithe and offering and uh, continue our time of worship. Lord, I thank you and praise you for how your love is exactly as we sang, amazing, it's surprising, it's steady, it's unchanging. Lord, when we think about all the things that your love may make us do, whether it's singing, it's praising you, it's, it's recognizing your goodness, your greatness, your mercy, your love, it's, it's acknowledging you, Lord. Your love is um, all those things. And yet um, we have these words to describe it and they seem to still fall short, Lord. I thank you for your um, amazing care for me, uh, the amazing gift of salvation for me personally. I thank you for how you extended that to the world. It's there for all of humanity to recognize. And I thank you for that gift. Lord, I thank you for each person that's here today, even if, as we prepare to take the tithe and offering. I, I pray your blessing upon it. And Father, I think about a number of folks are on my mind, in particular, as we gather together this morning. I think about uh, Debbie Lampson and the family, the Lampson family. And Lord, I, th I thank you f that, that, that Bob is uh, rejoicing with you. <laughs> rejoicing and uh, I thank you for that promise I thank you again for that gift I thank you as the family continues to make preparations and Lord as they continue to live their lives uh, joyfully while still uh, grieving the loss of their loved one I just thank you uh, for our church family and the, and the support and encouragement that we can be together in a time like this Father I thank you that um, there are so many in our in our in our midst in our body of believers here in this community. I thank you. I thank you, Lord. While this may seem odd, Lord, I thank you for the needs that they have. We can easily overlook needs as just being something that we don't want. <laughs> and when I say needs, I think of people that are suffering through something right now or have an obstacle or challenge before them. Lord, I thank you for these in a, in a way that we would recognize what we need to do to come to their aid, to be there as fellow believers in Christ, to help them through it, to pick them up, to encourage them, to be your hands and your feet, Lord, to be the salt and the light here. I thank you. Lord, I thank you for the pastor in Geneva and as they're away right now. Lord, I thank you for their return to come and uh, I thank you for their ministry here and for their whole family. Lord, I thank you for each believer here in this community that we gather together each week, that we celebrate, that we worship, that we love, that we uh, embrace, and for all the times in between that we do as well, Lord. May we continue to lift each other up in this walk here on this earth for your kingdom and for your glory. We do it all for that, for your glory, Lord, not for our own sake, but for your glory. We hope to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. We do it for your glory and for your kingdom. We just pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days. All of my days. I want to praise the wonders of
nothing compares, nothing compares to the promise that I have in you. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. Nothing compares. Lord, we have many in our lives we love. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. There are many things we enjoy on this earth. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. The Super Bowl is awesome. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. The snow is beautiful. The sun is warm. And on and on and on. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. Help us to hold fast to that. Help, to, help us Help us to realize that it informs our actions, our words, our deeds, how we extend our hands, and who we reach out to. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. We thank you for the truth and for that promise. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. Children, come on up for Children's Church. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for each person who was able to come today and for each person that you have here as, as part of our local church family. Lord, we thank you for these young people especially and that you would bless um, them as they look at your word together, help them to understand it and um, help them to be able to apply it to their lives, we ask in Jesus' name, amen. Well, good morning. I got an awesome privilege of, you've heard me say this before, but I get to look out at all my brothers and sisters in Christ here. This is so awesome. Um, I get a privilege to introduce to you today uh, Richard Grindle. Uh, Richard and Kay, um, they live in Oakland, as I look at my notes here to try to you know, sound smart. But, um, and, they, uh, and they worship at the Kennebec Valley Baptist Church. They became uh, part of the Gideons in 1999, and if you're from Winslow, uh, you would call him Chief, as he, uh, as he was, he's retired from the Winslow Police Department as Chief, 40 years of service, so thank you very much. Um, they have two married daughters and two grandchildren, and um, Richard's going to tell you all about the Gideons, so let's welcome our brother up. Well, it's nice to be here. Since I've got here, every five minutes, we've heard something about the Patriots. <laughs> when we heard something about the Eagles. Just remember, the Patriots and reenactors have guns. The Eagles will fly away. <laughs> also, traveling yesterday on the interstate and turnpike, even the state of Maine has got into this. No, maybe some of you have seen it. And now when I say you, it's Y-O, but it says Belichick yourself. <laughs> Buckle your seatbelt. And it says 87 is Gronk's number, not the speed limit. <laughs> so I thought that was interesting, and I figured I'd share that with you. But it is great to be here. I mean, this is probably my third time in the last four or five years. Your pastor keeps inviting me to come, and... Uh, He's gone. <laughs> and that's fine, because I, I know where he's gone, and he's serving. And we do get to see him in November, because the Gideons put on a pastor's appreciation banquet, and we invite your pastor and his wife, and we've invited Corey and his wife, and they've come down and fellowshiped with us. So we do get a chance to fellowship with them, 
and I enjoy your pastor very, very much. Very, very much. But I want to thank you for allowing my wife and I to come. Uh, we serve in this ministry together, and we serve with some other members of your church. Gerald and Angel are involved in the Gideon ministry. Ron and Sally are involved in the ministry, and I'm sorry to hear they're not here today. They're under the weather a little bit, but I uh, ask you to pray for them also. But it's great to have other Gideons and auxiliary to worship with and to work with in the ministry. I uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity to come and share the Gideon ministry with you. I also have to thank my wife for coming because she's my real support. And she not only comes with me, but she prays for me as we do this. So this is, this is great. And for over 100 years now, it's approximately 118 years, the Gideons and the Auxiliary have one goal in mind. And that is winning boys and girls, men and women, to come a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And I know that's the ministry of your church here, too, as it should be. To win the lost here in this community, in the surrounding communities, in the county, in the state, in the country, and internationally. Matthew 28, 19, and 20 says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always. I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. I just want to share a testimony. The testimonies, except for the one you'll see for video here shortly, the testimonies are all brand new off the press. Uh, sometimes I've come and I've given you some testimonies that may be two years old or three years old. But we get a Gideon magazine. And it's usually a two-month issue, and this one happens to be the February, March 2018. So you know that's hot off the press. And some of the testimonies in it are hot off the press. I just want to share the hot off the press with you. I recently visited a church, an Emmanuel Romanian church in Vienna. The pastor invited me to share the Gideon ministry. So we shared about the prayer, the membership, and the yearly donations that churches can do to help the ministry and how people can join to help with the ministry also. After my presentation, a guest, not the pastor, but a guest pastor shared this encouraging testimony. A guest pastor, a guest speaker in a church only God can do that and put that together and get all this testimony and information stuff together. In this town in Romania, pastors from local churches were formed together to get another church started in this area. They invited everyone. They went house to house inviting everyone to come and attend this new church. So they reached the house of this elderly couple. When they reached the house, they were invited. The answer from the elderly lady was, we are waiting for you. While cleaning her son's room sometime before, she had found a Gideon Bible probably given to the son at a school distribution. They read the book, the mother and the father read the book, and they understood that they hadn't been worshiping correctly. They hadn't been worshiping the correct person. And they thought that that was a sign. But what church... What religion should we go to? And they didn't know. So they said, we will wait and see 
who invites us? Well, they got invited, and they went to this new church. Both of them there made decisions to follow Christ. They have been baptized, and they are active Christians currently serving in their church. We were waiting for you. Who else is waiting for us? Who else is waiting for us in this neighborhood, in this area surrounding communities? Who's waiting us for Maine? Who's waiting for us in the United States? Who's waiting for us around the world? I will say there are many waiting for us, and there are many waiting for Bibles. Last year, by God's grace and his enabling, we were able to distribute approximately 92 million Bibles in 201 countries and in 101 languages. Now, I just want to take the time out, as Belichick would do, and say, I want to tell you, before I forget, that there is now a Gideon app you can put on your smartphone. And it is the Bible. It's not just the Bible. You can read the Bible in a hundreds of different dialects and uh, versions, not versions, but uh, languages. You can have it read to you in those languages. If you were to go to Paris and just happen to witness and they didn't understand your English, you just punch French and it'll read it in French to them. John 3.16, whatever verse you want to think about. But that app is free. You all can download it. Just go to www.gideons.org. So placing the scriptures in outreach hands, outstretched hands, goes on 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, approximately 2 to 2.5 Bibles per second. So Bibles, how do we get them there? Well, we get them there in several different forms. You know that uh, we have the motel, hotel Bibles. It's the only full, entire Bible that we publish. And that goes into the motels and hotels. But the publishing company sells these to us for $5. So... At the end, and I'm assuming it's still the same this year, at the end, there's usually a plate out back. You can put some money in it, and that would go to the Gideons. For every $5, you can take and purchase a hotel, motel Bible. We also have, and I've mentioned it to you before, nursing homes, convalescent homes, retirement homes. What I am using... Myself now, a little enlarged print. Oh, you got the joke, okay. A little enlarged print where you can read the Bible. It's only the New Testament and Psalms. And then we also have various colored, small New Testaments and Psalms and Proverbs. This one here happens to be a military. And we give out to the military at what they call their maps stations. That's where they enter by getting sworn in, and uh, they are able to take one of these at that time. We have grade 5 through grade 12. We don't get into the schools very much anymore, almost never. We could pray about that. But we're giving these out now at the fairs. We have been at the Skowhegan State Fair, in fact, Gerald and Angel have done that too. We're at the fair for the whole 10 days in Skowhegan. And we give out Bibles every year now. I think we've been four or five years from there. We also have college testaments, which are green. 
And I will say that the ladies help us. The auxiliary have their places of distribution too. Doctor's offices, dentist offices, nursing homes, hospitals, that they get a chance to give out white testaments, nurses' testaments, to the nurses and the medical staff of all those facilities. And I have heard testimonies of these having been carried by the nurses and saving people in their beds in the hospital prior to the Lord calling them home. Now the auxiliary and the almost the auxiliary and the Gideons have another function besides passing out Bibles. And that is personal witnessing. The men use a new Burgundy Bible, and the ladies have what is called the periwinkle. Looks bluish, but periwinkle Bible. And we distribute those in our personal witnessing. Might give one out to a toll taker. Might give one out to a waitress. Anytime the Lord gives you an opportunity. But these Bibles, the Gideons and the Auxiliary, purchase ourselves. That's because we're doing the personal witnessing and we're not spending church funds to do our personal witnessing. It does say, in, and you've heard it, I, I quote this every time. Isaiah 55, 11. So shall my word be that go forth out of my mouth. It shall not. It shall not. It shall not return void. But it shall accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I send it. He's using the Gideons International right now to send it to 201 countries. We just got our 201st country in this month's issue of the Gideon magazine. We get a chance to give these out. And when we give these out across the, the ocean and in other foreign countries, we're giving out the small New Testament with Psalms and Proverbs. That costs approximately $1.25. So if somebody were to give $125 to the Gideons International, they can buy a box of 100 copies of God's Word to be placed in 100 hands attached to 100 souls that need salvation. We send Gideons across the sea and into foreign countries on scripture blitzes. This is in a team of approximately 24 Gideons. They go out for one to two weeks, and they go to help those Gideons distribute hundreds of thousands and millions of scriptures in that one to two week period. The Gideons go at their own expense. Everything to do with the expense of that trip is covered by the Gideon himself and not by your offerings. You see, your offerings go with nothing to but the publishing and the shipping to where these Bibles are going to be given out. So we're one of the very few ministries or even other organizations they can say 100% of what you give goes to Bibles. Another way to supply the Bibles is through the Gideon Card program. And you have a display out back there with Gideon Cards in memory, in recognition, and thinking of praying for you. And every time you use one of those cards, you will receive a card to send to, we'll say, a loved one that's lost somebody. And you send a card to them saying, I'm sorry. You know, you might add a little personal note on it. It'll tell you that you are giving, are donating three Bibles, five Bibles, 
in memory of, in recognition of, or because I'm thinking of praying for you in your name or in the name of the lost one. And you know, those Bibles last five to six years in a hotel motel. They have the potential to see or reach 2,600 different people. That one Bible in one room. I also like to share with you another testimony. I may kill the pronunciation, but Xiao Hong Lim was born in the traditional Buddhist family. He followed the rituals of the family. He went to the uh, temple to celebrate the birthday of Buddha once a year. He was very busy. He didn't, wasn't able to go to church on a, on a temple on a regular basis, but he went once a year. After graduating from high school, he entered the Korean Foreign Language University where he received, and this is actually one of them, a bilingual Korean-English Bible. So having received the Bible, he did like many would do. He used it to balance his desk by placing it up on, uh, under one of the legs, not thinking of it anymore. About a year or two afterwards, he began to take English as a language to learn and to study. And all of a sudden, that Korean English Bible came to mind. So he pulled it out from underneath the desk, and he began to read it. He began with the very first chapter of Matthew. At first, he thought, boy, this is an odd story. But he continued to read, furthering his study in English. When he reached Matthew 5, he was amazed by the teaching of Jesus. By the time he read Romans 5, he knew he was a sinner. He accepted Christ as his personal Savior and deciding to live the rest of his life for the Lord, he began studying at a theological seminary, and at the age of 33, he is now a pastor preaching the word of Christ. Another Bible doing something for the Lord. That Bible placed by, it might have been one of you. It might have been one of us. But I'm sorry to say that we do not have enough money in to send all the Bibles that are requested. So I just ask and pray that not only we, but all others in this country can give a little bit more so that more Bibles can go out. And when those Bibles go out, that's a to God be the glory moment. But when there's a decision, that's even a bigger and better to God be the glory moment. So how can you be involved in this ministry? Well, first of all, we ask you to pray for it. Anybody and everyone can use more prayer, including us. Secondly, I invite you to give maybe in the offering plate tonight so that we can distribute more Bibles. Thirdly, I invite some of you men to join Ron, join Gerald, join myself, and being a Gideon and being involved and, and, and working and doing what the Lord wants you to, to do in this ministry. Number one, we are men of the book. 
We are men of prayer. We are men of faith. We are men of a separated walk. We have compassionate hearts. We are men who witness, and we are men who give. And if you believe in the Word of God as being the inerrant Word, only from Him, God breathed. If you believe in a literal hell, if you believe in marriage being between a man and a woman, if you're a member of an evangelical Protestant church, and if you are pastor recommended, which Pastor Reese did for the night, because the Sallies have been in so long, I don't know who the pastor would have been back then. Yeah, those are the qualifications. We ask you that if any of you men might consider or think or have questions about, see Ron, see Gerald, see me, and we will tell you about what the ministry means to us. I have a, uh, a video. Uh, I don't know if it's just Bruce up there, but I yeah, got a video with another testimony. It's about 10 minutes long, but I like to show somebody, uh, churches, an actual person that has been uh, saved. United States of America because I believe that the work that is being accomplished here, the salvation of the human soul, God's redemption of the world, the dissemination of his word is more important work than any other convention is undertaking in the United States right now. We all have those days that are frozen in our memories. I suspect every one of us here can recall exactly where you were and what you were doing when you heard the news on September 11, 2001, that uh, planes had gone into the towers. Raise your hand if you can remember. Some of you can go farther back than that. Some of you can remember November 22, 1963, exactly where you were, what you were doing when you heard the news of President Kennedy's assassination. How many of you can remember that? Some of you, I'm going to ask you not to raise your hand, I'm going to ask you to stand. Some of you probably can remember that day that will live in infamy, December 7, 1941. If you can remember that, would you stand? Yeah, wonderful. Thank you so much. Anyone here remember Abe Lincoln being shot? Okay, good. Some of those days we share in common because they were national events, but some of those days are very personal to us. We remember when we were married. We remember when we lost someone significant to us. We remember the birth of our children. I want to tell you about one of those days that is very personal to me, and it occurred roughly in 1970. My father was in the Army, and he was stationed in Butzbach, Germany. And uh, we were there with him. And uh, if you know anything about the military in Germany around 1970, you know that we lived in one of those rows upon rows of houses that were absolutely identical. Three stairwells to a building, eight apartments to a stairwell, they all fed down to a common area. And at that common area, things would be delivered. The milkman would come and he would deliver milk and the bread man would come and he would deliver bread and he would simply leave it out in that common area and then when you woke up you would go down and get those things that belonged to you and settle up once a month. It was a great way of doing things. And uh, so that was the situation when one Saturday morning I woke up long before anybody else woke up. 
and I knew better than to wake my parents up, so I had to find something that I was going to do for a couple of hours just to kill some time. When I looked over into our living room and uh, saw a Bible laying <coughs> on a coffee table. Now, in those days, you know that uh, there was no American television, there was only uh, Radio Free Europe. You would get certain things like uh, Lawrence Welk and so forth, and I know some of you think Lawrence Welk is a wonderful, a wonderful, but uh, for a 10-year-old kid, that really didn't float my boat. <coughs> so I decided I knew what I wanted to do. And I walked over and I picked up that New Testament had no idea how it had gotten there, don't know if it was distributed to my father, to one of my brothers in school, I just don't know. But I thought, you know, in a few minutes, everyone is going to start feeding down to the common area to pick up the goods that have been left there for them. And so I think what I will do is I will take this Bible and I will go down to that common area and I will position myself in a prominent place and I will read this Bible so that everyone who comes down will see me reading that Bible and they will think, oh, what a good boy. <laughs> and so I did. I took the Bible down and I began to read. I started at the beginning, which was Matthew. And uh, Matthew was a little tough for a 10-year-old because it starts off with all kinds of people with big, long, unusual names begetting other people with even longer, more unusual names. But I worked my way through that. And then I came to this character, John the Baptist. Now, I could identify more with John the Baptist. He was a guy running around in the desert, dressed with a leather loincloth, and uh, eating bugs and wild honey. And in 1970, lots of folks were doing that. So I really kind of understood this character. And then I came to Jesus. And I had heard about Jesus. I knew that he was a good person, a good teacher, like Confucius. And so I wanted to read about Jesus. And I did begin reading. And so I read through the Sermon on the Mount. And as I was reading, I came to this one passage that said, Jesus telling those people who were listening to him, when you do your righteous deeds, beware of doing it in public so that you can be seen by other people. <laughs> Don't be like those hypocrites when you pray and when you give. Now, at 10 years old, I didn't know a hypocrite from a hippopotamus, but I knew it couldn't be good. And all of a sudden, I was just filled with shame. And I can remember so clearly, I remember what I was wearing, a powder blue windbreaker jacket. And I remember taking that New Testament and tucking it like Napoleon into my jacket and wanting to make it back up to our second floor apartment without anyone seeing me. And I did. And that just filled me with all kinds of questions. Why do I feel this way? Why would Jesus say not to do this? Isn't reading the Bible a good thing? Why should I not be seen to be doing something that is good? And who cares what Jesus thinks anyway? I mean, he's been dead for 2,000 years, right? And the only way I knew to answer these questions was to keep reading. So I did. I worked my way through Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. And then as I was reading in John chapter 3, I came to something that was an answer to me. It wasn't John 3, 16. It was the verse that followed. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And I came to a childlike understanding that Jesus didn't come into the world 
to make me feel guilty. He came into the world to relieve me of my guilt. There was a place in the back of that Bible where I could say a prayer and ask the Lord to receive me and for me to receive him. And I prayed that prayer and I signed my name and I wrote that date down. That's been over 45 years ago. My life has never been the same. My destiny, my eternity has never been the same since that day. And I think about that in this context. Somewhere there is a Gideon who has no idea of the story that you just heard. Somewhere there's a Gideon who gave that Bible to someone other than me and it simply found its way by God's good providence into my hands. And I wonder about him. Did he grow discouraged? Did he grow weary? Did he ever know of the fruit that came from his labors? Someday, someday, I'm going to get the opportunity to sit down and thank that Gideon. Until that day, I'm going to content myself to thank you for your work and to encourage you and say, don't grow weary in your well-doing. Don't give up. Even when you don't see fruit, know that it's there. God will not allow his word to return void. He will accomplish the purpose for which he sends it forth. Don't grow weary. You will reap if you do not faint. Thank you, and God bless you for your work. As he was mentioning, we went to the back, and he signed. You see uh, New Testaments that we give out. In the front is where to find help. If you're anxious, afraid, if you're bitter or critical, if you're needing rules for living, if you're prayerful, if you're sick, and several other areas, It'll give you a verse or two to go, to be comforted. But in the back, there's a section on God loves you and verses to back it. There are other areas, one being all are sinners, verses to back it. God's remedy for sin, again, verses to back it. All may be saved now, and verses to back it. And then there's my decision to receive Christ as my personal Savior. And as he mentioned, as Keith mentioned, he wrote his name, and he put a date. And then it goes on to tell you about seeking a church, and then assurance as a believer. All the Bibles that are passed out have that. You see, it was just, some people would say, half a chance. You know, if that, I'm pronouncing it right. That it just doesn't just happen. Or does God orchestrate all these connections, like Keith with his Bible? <clears throat> There's a couple letters that came in just within the last month or two. And a couple of them touched me a little bit. And I'll have to say amen because it's very, very true, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Elaine, a mother, only first name, Elaine, says in 1983 she lost the custody of her son. She was an emotional wreck. She just left Houston after her first visitation and was distraught. In Beaumont, Beaumont Texas, she stopped because she couldn't stop crying. She went into a hotel. She picked up a Bible. She opened it to the verse that changed her life. She says, 
Thank you for being there for me. She says, I took the Bible with me. Now fast forward it to 2016. My nephew started studying the Bible with his neighbor. Soon afterwards, he moved. Soon afterwards, she realized her Bible was missing. He, the nephew, sheepishly told her that he stole it. He was shocked when I replied, that's okay, it was hot. I stole it too. But she's thanking the Gideons for the Bible and for the placements because it changed her life. Oh, and it changed her nephew's life. Two for the price of one. Which leads me to Peru. And when the Gideons went for a placement, one of the teachers in the school says, I want you to see our library. Went and saw the library, and in the library, very few books. But there were 12 New Testaments on the shelf from previous years. One of the Gideons pulled it out, looked at it, looked at the back, just like the back of this Bible, looked at the back of it. My, there was a name and a date. And the number, another name and a date. And another name and a date. In that one Bible, there were 26 names written down with the dates of their salvation. So for $1.25 today, we have the possibility of getting to reach 26 people like that one did. In closing, another letter of thanks. My 17-year-old son was in church Sunday, October 29th, just this last October 29th, when a Gideon made a presentation. And he asked the people of the Church of the Foothills in Cameron Park, California, to give so they could buy Bibles. Her 17-year-old son gave a portion of his birthday money and some money that he had earned from selling his BMX Bible and gave it for giving scriptures. This mom writes, thank you for your dedication in serving Jesus and the lost. You are doing an amazing job and you had an impact on the heart of my teenage boy. So I'm gonna close and I'm gonna just say there's a plate out back. If you can give a dollar, if you can give more, that will purchase Bibles so that we can continue to ship them out and we can continue to change lives. Thank you. I moved. I hope you are too. And uh, there's a, a plate in back. There's a place. Uh, there's a plate out in front too. Also. Um, if, if you allow me to, I'd like to lead us in prayer, in parting, and I want to lift up the Gideons. If you would join me, please. Father God, thank you for, for this time that you've given us to come together, to worship, praise, sing, lift up your word, to be filled by your love, and to encourage us to give that love back to this world that needs it so much. Father, you've impacted every life individually, and there's many ways that you do this. And Father, I want to thank you for all the opportunities that you give us so that we can be a part of something so much bigger than we are. When we have the opportunity to give in our tithes and offering to this church body, it not only takes care of the plant, but it takes care of outside of these walls. But Father, there's more. You give us the opportunity to bless the Gideon, Gideon's International, that 
Spread your word throughout the world. Oh, Father God, how awesome it is that you give us the privilege to be a part of that. So, Father, I pray that you press it upon our hearts to always be about your will and way. And your will and way is that your word would go out. So, Father, I pray that you would bless the gifts that were given and are given to the Gideons International, that you would expound and you would multiply and that you would send out your word. Thank you for giving us this opportunity. Thank you for loving us so much. Amen. Go with God. Go in peace. Enjoy a good week. We'll see you next week.